Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UK we have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is remaining largely dry over the next five days but we will be seeing a change of air mass and that does mean that we are going to get rid of all the gloom and cloud through the weekend into the start of next week. We are going to see some slightly fresher air masses coming in off the Atlantic and high pressure will rebuild back in early next week but with those fresher air masses involved and what that means is it's going to be drier but we are going to see sunshine and that does mean again things will be more pleasant temperatures will be a bit cooler because of the slightly colder air but I think that definitely is outweighed by that sunshine. As we into the longer range, though, it is looking fairly likely now that we go cold as we head into the second half of November. How cold, how far below average, uh, and whether we see any wintriness with that, still yet to be determined. But we've got some very interesting runs once again this evening. GFS is completely over the top with its huge block. But funnily enough, the EC of the F is the coldest run today, producing some really potent and persistent northerly winds as we head into the second half of the month and it does bring the risk of a snow on its run today and of course the ensembles as well are fairly confident with the majority of ensemble members now below average for much of the next two weeks or so so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in description and if you start on the live radar you can see once again it is dry but of course lots of clouds still around and bits and bobs of drizzle however that will be changing over the coming days as i said we will see some sunshine as we see this high pressure we got over the top of us at the moment move away briefly in some slightly lower pressure with a few weak weather fronts before high pressure rebuilds through sunday and monday and that's what we do see high pressure but with a drier and clearer air mass now, if you look at the temperatures, you can see it still is a little bit chilly, especially inland. We've got that gloom and, and drizzle and fog, but generally the air mass is pretty mild, but it will be turning colder over the coming days. Now, if you go over to the latest UKV now and start on the precipitation and the temperature over the coming days, you can see still gloomy as we head into Saturday, but signs of a change with a bit of precipitation starting to move in from the west as we head into Monday. And look at this clearing as we see this weather, weak weather front move through. Now, for Sunday, still could be gloomy in a few spots, but into Monday, look at that. Lots of sunshine, especially into the afternoon. Still could be bits and bobs of cloud, but none of this huge blanket of cloud. And unfortunately, it does mean there will be some weather fronts around. We do see that change in air mass. It is going to bring weather fronts, but you can see it doesn't look too heavy through Tuesday and Wednesday. And it does look like a fairly light and quick moving uh, weather front there. So a bit of rain, maybe Monday through to Wednesday. But I think as I said, it is completely outweighed by the sunshine. You can see why is because we've got a fairly stagnant air mass at the moment, it's not really moving around. And that means all that fog and cloud kind of stays stationary. But through Sunday into Monday, we see quite a big change in the air mass. Look at that much colder, fresher air mass is moving through and kind of oscillating between milder and colder air masses. That causes those weather fronts, but of course, causes those driest and clearer slots as well. So yes, a little bit of rain, slightly colder air masses, but we will see plenty more sunshine into next week. Now, if you look at the surface temperatures, you can see as we head into Saturday, it's another pretty gloomy and miserable day. Only 7 to 12 degrees, actually not particularly mild at all at the surface. Um, and that, as I said, is because of all that cloud. The upper air temperatures do deserve something a bit warmer, but all the cloud and gloom is just keeping those temperatures really quite cold. As we head into Sunday, we do see fresh air masses moving in, but it's actually slightly milder, maybe mid-teens, low-teens for most into monday it is again sort of eight to 12 degrees but it is a fresher feel with colder air in place the same can be said for tuesday again hovering around that eight to ten degree mark and the same for wednesday so you can actually see on the thermometer saturday looks like the coldest day in the next five days but in terms of overall synoptics upper air temperatures monday through to wednesday we will see fresher air masses moving in it will feel a little bit chilly but it is offset by that sunshine now, if you head into the longer range, we've got great intrigue into the second half of November, as we are fairly confident we're going to see some North Atlantic or even Greenland and Icelandic blocking and colder or at least cooler air masses moving in. 
Nikazi high pressure continues to dominate, but you can see it rebuilds in from the southwest through Monday and Tuesday. And you can see a slight easterly flow that keeps it a little bit chilly. You see the tropospheric polar vortex gets displaced towards green, uh, towards Scandinavia, and that's a big thing we need to watch next week. And that will decide whether these charts we're seeing now do verify. Because what happens is all transitions eastwards, blocking the high pressure replaces up towards northern Canada and Greenland, and we see northerly winds starting to develop. Now for the GFS, we are seeing uh, the UK actually develop on the wrong or milder side of the block, depending on how you view it. We've still got a massive Greenland block, we've got cold air pooling out of the Arctic, but because the blocking is just slightly further north and it's a bit detached from the Azores high, we've not got a block spreading across the North Atlantic, we actually see low pressure systems trying to push through, and we actually see some really severe lows, because what happens is we've got exceptionally cold air on the northern and western side, very mild air on the eastern side, and we're trapped in the middle. So we will be cold for a time, we'll be mild, there'll be bits of snow for Scotland, but there'll be mild conditions in the south and lots of rain around. As we see in the GFS ensembles at the end of the video, though, this is not the favoured outcome, but it just shows you how over the top some of the charts are getting. And it just shows that there is a real, real possibility now, I'd even say a high chance that this blocking does come off it's not just speculative anymore we started to see charts like this from the gfs it means there is something afoot um, we'll have to wait and see what it does but yeah this is a pretty ridiculous chart here from the gfs with this massive green and block all this cold air pooling out into the north atlantic spinning up these exceptionally severe low pressure systems so it probably wouldn't be cold and wintry but it would be very stormy as a result of all of that cold air as we see from the Eastern WF, though, we will see a bit more of a realistic chart, which is more of a proper sustained North Atlantic block with more of a sustained northerly wind. Now, the GEM is a little bit more pessimistic today. High pressure building in, slowly transitioning westwards and low pressure transitioning eastwards as well. But again, we don't really see anything major come off. And again, it's because these low pressure systems to our north and our west don't clear eastwards. Now, that could happen in the frames beyond that. That's a real possibility. But at day 10, blocking is starting to develop and we start to see a blocks and a not a traditional North, a North, a Northern Hemisphere setup, but we aren't cold at all here. We're actually mild with the southwesterly. So GM are still showing a change in synoptics, still showing the Northern Hemisphere getting shaken up, but not developing anything majorly cold. Now, the GEM and the GFS have been the ones that have been pushing the cold weather the last few days. And as we've seen, there's still blocks, they're still very intriguing, but not fully delivering anything cold or wintry. The ECMWF, on the other hand, has been the more pessimistic run, has basically been the GEM, or just what we saw there, that's been that's what the ECMWF has been showing the last few days. But today, it's the coldest run, pretty typical. Uh, I did say that it would be uh, it would be typical that the models will uh, flip on each other. ECMWF will be the most optimistic one. You can see here, though, late next week, slowly getting easterly or northeasterly winds, and then as we head into the next weekend, northerly winds get unlocked with a big sustained North Atlantic block heading up towards Greenland. More of a succinct, reliable block here with northerly winds developing. And with a little bit of low pressure developing within that, with a bit of a milder slot, wouldn't rule out even some heavy snow potentially in this sort of scenario. Intriguing this chart. Um, and yet, yeah, Easter Birth is the most optimistic run here with colder conditions as we head into the second half of the month. You can still see, though, the Northern Hemisphere is not primed for colder weather. We are still in November. There isn't that much cold availability, but we are tapping into all of that cold air here towards the end of November. It's going to be one to keep a very close eye on once again. But you can see both, all three of the main models all showing the Northern Hemisphere getting flipped on its head no flat westerly something is definitely afoot for the second half of the month most likely a colder pattern but as we saw from the gfs might not be especially cold could be very unsettled might not be go as cold you can see though on the ensembles we've got a pretty high confidence that it is going to be below average you can see really only a couple of days now of above average conditions and then it goes slightly cooler into early next week into the middle of the week and then potentially more significantly colder 
late next week into the following week. And you see the ensemble mean here getting down to kind of minus three, minus four, which is very cold for the time of year, almost five degrees below average. You can see the GFS operational run, though, is all over the place. That's a thicker green line there, um, all over the place, up and down mostly up so it just shows you the majority of, of the gfs ensembles don't agree with that operational run and are much more succinct with that below average temperature with moderate precipitation so it does show you that gfs run was a little bit crazy it was a little bit out there and a little bit away from what the majority of the ensemble suites are showing you can see cold and a little bit unsettled but not massively unsettled you see two meter temperatures are going to be turning chillier, most likely high single digits at best late next week, probably down to mid towards mid single digits when we potentially get that colder air pushing in. And of course, these ensemble members will correct near the time. They probably will get a little bit colder. We do note that as we head into the winter months, always the ensemble members are a little bit optimistic with those temperatures, a little bit milder than we actually see, especially those overnight temperatures. And if we compare to the dew points, lots of cold dew points coming up, looking low single digits, if not towards freezing into that longer range, especially the last 10 days or so of the month really could be pretty cold if we saw these sort of dew points moving in. And finally, if we compare to the Eastern Bear ensembles, unfortunately, you can't have a look at midday ensembles yet, so it's not fully run. But the midday ensembles, uh, sorry, the midnight ensembles are pretty much very similar to the GFS, well below average for the full super future. Maybe not as below average, but below average nonetheless. And you see the operation run was actually pretty cold once again, being one of the coldest ensemble members towards the end of the run as well. So you can see all three main models are showing something is afoot, blocking into the Northern Hemisphere, east of the left, the coldest of those runs. And you can see the ensembles now are fairly on board with at least below average temperatures. And that is the first start towards something potentially even colder and maybe wintry. But I don't want to get anyone's hopes up because we are still in November. If we push this back three or four weeks into early mid-December, then definitely we would be looking at cold or very cold conditions. But because it is mid to late November, it just is that much more difficult to see something properly wintry. So we'll have to keep a close eye on this, but you can't rule anything out at this stage. Definitely though, it is one to watch. Not a bog standard November at all. Very gloomy and high pressure dominated for the first half, and potentially much colder as we head into the second half of the month. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.